Hello everybody, my name is Alan, I'm from Cyber Lab, and today will be another video about Synology NAS. This video specific, I believe that's part two, where I'm gonna show how you can configure and install your Synology drive in the way that you can use this Synology as your own cloud local host and your, all your data is protected locally. Also in this video, we're gonna explain a little bit more about the risk for you contract some external clouds as Google Drive, Dropbox and others and what you need to have in mind before you make this decision. Also we explain why you shouldn't use one of those, yes, an external hard drive for have all your data connected to this and saving those hard drives because we we'll have a lot of risk. And in this video you're gonna have a little bit more understand what's the risk, what's the good point and what's the bad point to have your own cloud relationship will have external cloud. So if you like this idea and want to learn a little bit more about it, we're gonna show in this video. But first of all, don't forget to leave your like, consider to subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed yet, and let's understand a little bit more about it. Before we start to explain how you can install Snowledge Drive in your Knowledge NAS or your computer that we set up, we need to understand why it's important to have a cloud or what's the advantage to have a cloud. Okay, in the past, everyone used to have one of those as a data transfer or either as a backup. So you want to have all your information in one place and that uh, you can connect from computer to computer, you can uh, move from one place to another and everything to work well. But uh, imagine that this one, all the data, it's exactly here. And this one is considered a single point of failure. What it means? It means that if you drop, if you lose, or anything happen with this hard drive, all your data is lost. And it's not ideal to have all your data reliable on only one device, only one thing. Also, some people leave everything in your local hard drive for a computer. And what's the risk for it? Nowadays, all the computers is connected to the internet and it's really cheap to have a DSL or Wi-Fi or anything connect to your computer. In this way, you always have uh, available to be a hack attack. You can open an email that have some compromised information and all your data could be lost, could be encrypted or anything else that can happen. Or worst, or by mistake you deleted that specific file and you didn't realize until it was too late and that it was really difficult to recover or maybe you cannot recover. This reason that cloud systems start to be so common because you have all your data in the cloud and that everything is accessible anywhere that you want and you can share this information with others without the need to physically go there and get the hard drive and bring for someone else. So this one makes the life for everyone easy. But then with time everyone starts to use this cloud start to have some problems. The first problem is the price. So before the cloud system was quite cheap because they want to attract a lot of attention, but then it's not something that you can keep for longer. You need to make profit. And with this, the price starts to bump up. Also the hard drive price starts to go down. Before to buy a four terabytes hard drive, you're gonna pay 150, 200 pounds. Now you can pay for less than 100 pounds, a reliable hard drive. So the price of the hard drive starts to be low of course, the energy is not so high, but have some device that's really low power consumption and that uh, you don't need to pay the monthly fee. You need to pay one off and the rest will be forever free for you. Also, you have control for all your data and you understand why you say you have control for all your data. In the past, I used Google Drive and in the Google Drive, I decided to move some videos that I have, some movies that I have, that I want to share with one of my friends. And after few days that I put this move in the cloud, I receive an email say, you have some uh, copyright information in your email, in your drive, please delete it or otherwise they will have the correct actions for it. And I stop and say, why? So I discovered that the Google Drive and any other drive, they can check your data and see if you have any compromised data or have any issue with it. And because of it, it's high risk because they can use your data, you can access your data, you can check your data. Not necessarily that you're gonna use for anything, but uh, have in mind, Google use the data that they collect for add-ons. Why they cannot do the same with your drive or your information? I don't know, it's something that's not proof, but 
I have always this mind. So I want to keep my data protect and I want to have everything in my control. And I don't need or I don't want to pay a fee every time. So today I can pay 10 pounds in the one month time, two months times, one year time, maybe I don't want to pay that 10 pounds anymore. Or if they increase the fee, I don't want to pay that amount. And because of it, all your data is there, you don't have choice. Or you pay or you take, take out your data. And that uh, it's not ideal. So in this way, the cloud self-host come true. And because I'm explaining a lot of uh, Synology NAS, one option for Synology NAS will be the Synology Drive. Before I go to this motion drive, let's go and show this data or this information that I just told for you. Here in my computer, I have uh, the web page for the Google Drive and here they say that it's around 10 pounds per month per user to have two terabytes. If I go to my mega, I have a similar price. I have uh, 864 per month per user to have two terabytes or two terabytes of traffic. If I go for my sync, it's around the same. And in the sync now they are offering unlimited packaging. And I don't believe in those unlimited because it's impossible to keep a reliable. They want to get more people in, in this cloud. And once that uh, they have more people, then they will say, okay, sorry guys, it's only a period of time. We're gonna change and now we're gonna charge. So I definitely don't believe in this unlimited. But then you're gonna ask Alan, okay, 10 pounds is not so much, yes, it's not so much. But if you look for the hard drives, one example, Amazon, I can buy a eight, seven pounds WD Red that it's made for NAS specific for eight, seven. So in eight months, I pay this initial investment. And that's after this one, and I can use it. And normally those hard drive, it's rate between two and five, depend what option that you get. If you get a pro version, it's five years that you should be running 20 by seven, during five years without any problem. Of course, you can run a little bit longer, you can have some tools to check if your hard drive is going to fail or anything, but if you, let's say, life shelf of the hard drive, it's average of five years, so after five years you replace, and that's if you consider that you spend eight, seven pounds over five years, will be much less than you spend 10 pounds every month for five years. So I have this one in mind, we're gonna explain how work this knowledge drive. If I open it here, here is the Synology drive and it's really similar for the Google Drive. You can have all your drive, all your information and here you can have your platform working 20 by 7 as long as your NAS is on. You can have a sync or backup, you can have correlation, you can share data, have multiple users, you can have an application that you can install so you can use on demand. So all your data is not local on your computer, it's in someone else or in the NAS and that's the only download as per demand. And once that you use and you don't need for a period of time, they will delete for a computer and keep a copy on your NAS. You can have a, a small hard drive in your computer and have a lot of data external and access it as you need. So you can have go or you can go backups as well. You can have multiple users, multiple formats that you can do, you can search information and you can have the web page or the application in your computer. So, but to have it, you need to have a Synology drive or Synology NAS or any device that's running with the same. And this device, I show a few videos before how to do it. If you don't know how to do, please look at the video in the description and that you're gonna understand it. Also, you need to have some users. So in this way, let's open our Synology. Here, this one is exactly the same configuration that I showed in the previous video, how to do users. And if I come here and panel and users, here will be all my users. So I'll have uh, my admin, I have my Pedro as a user for one group, I have Philippe's user for another group. Also, if I come here in advance, I select enable home service. What it means? It means that each user in my homes will have a specific folder for it. And it's really good because they will have access only for their specific folder when they are using this drive. Of course, I have access for everything because I am the admin, but a normal user will not have access for everything. So now we're gonna start to install all the recording information to run my Synology drive. Because I'm not using a properly Synology drive, I need to use port forwarding and I need to use another system to have external access for it and generate the SSL. If I bought my Synology, I can use the Click Connect or QuickSync or something like it that is directly for my Synology. 
but I don't want to use it. I want to use my external website for it. So what I need to do, I need to install two applications. First application will be Docker, because we're going to install Cloudflare Tunnel to have this external access. And the second application that we're going to use will be the drive. So first thing, let's go to Docker. Here my Docker, I will install it and they will do everything for you. You only put install, they will load, they will process everything and in a couple of minutes it's ready for you to open. So let's wait. Perfectly, we just finished installing the Docker, but we're not going to open it yet because we want to install the drive. So we'll put drive and put enter. They have a few options, but the one that I'm going to use is knowledge drive server and put install. In the same, they will take some minutes until they finish to install everything. So let's wait until they finish. Once, once that finished to install, if I open here, we will have all the application that has been installed. If I come here, my Synology drive, it's what web page that we can access. And here we'll have my applications and what files that I have. Because I create a test, I have a folder test. If I come here, create another folder, test2, I have now test2. If I come here, file system, it's exactly the same in my home. So I can have access to it in the same way without the need to do any configuration. But still look my network. I need to access it using my internal IP, but uh, if I want to access this in external, I will not be able to do it. So what I need to do? It's simple. Let's come here, control panel and login portal. Here in login portal and the application, I can configure everything that I want. So if I come here, my knowledge drive, double click, I can configure my customized HTTPS or HTTP port. So let's use exactly the same. And now all the time that I use this IP address, they will go directly for my Synology drive. So let's save and let's try. I put 1002 and now I have my drive. So I don't need to access through the application. I can come here directly, but uh, it's done. No, not yet. I need to configure now my Cloudflare tunnel to be able to access it externally. To co configure my Cloudflare tunnel, I will open my Cloudflare tunnel and here we'll do the configuration. If you don't know how to do this configuration, or you're not sure all the information, please look at the video description where I show how you can do this configuration or at least how you understand a little bit more about Cloudflare tunnel. So anyway, let's create our connection. The name of this one will be cyberlab slash beta and put save tunnel. Now, once that saved the tunnel, now I can come here in my Docker and here is the configuration for the Docker. Before we do anything, let's copy this one, open a notepad and that save this information. So now I will put this one aside and I will open again my Synology. What I'm going to do, I will come here and open my Docker. So now it's the name of the application that I needed to look. I put register and I need to search the register that I want. If I come here in my notepad, I can see that the name of the application should be this one. So I'll come here and copy and paste. So now they are already appear the name of the application that I want to install. For Synology, it's really simple to install any Docker application or at least to download it. It's only double click and they will start to download. They will, of course, will ask what revision that you want to install and I put select the latest one because either here they say latest so let's leave the latest one and i come here in my images here my image automatically they will start to download and once it's red for you or finish the load will have the blue color here so now i can double click here and start configuration i have only one network because i only install one application and this network will be totally fine i can use exactly the same one but doesn't matter so i'll leave as a bridge and put next now i should put enable out restart, otherwise once that restart my system, this Cloudflare tunnel will stop and that's, uh, I will lose basically my connection and it's not what I want to do. Also, I'll remove this one here and come in advanced settings. In advanced settings, only thing that I need to do is come here as a good command and this is what I will put as a connection command. If you look, Cloudflare auto update, so I don't need to use this auto update, so I can remove it. Other thing that I can remove is uh, this Cloudflare run docker. So only command that I need to run is tunnel run and the token. So now I can copy all this information, come here back and paste it. Only thing that I use is this one, Cloudflare tunnel token and the token is exactly the same as my Cloudflare tunnel. Now I can put save, I put next, 
put next. I don't need to put any port because I will not to do any port forwarding. So my holder will not have any configuration. So for me, no port forwarding required. I put next. No volumes required as well. Put next. And that is basically done. I put done and should be complete. It will take a little bit to finish it to run. But if I come here in container, the red appears and run. So now I come back in my Cloudflare tunnel and magic the red appear the connector. So it's done. I put next. My domain will be my subdomain cyberlab and my domain cyberlab.com. And here is the tape of connection. Remember that I told that if I want to use, I can use this. Yes, so I can copy this information. And remember it's a HTTP protocol. So if I come here and paste the red save or show you as a HTTP, I can remove this information and I can remove this information and select as a HTTP. Once that this one's done, I can put save to now. And now I have um, here my web page, my public address. What it means if I come here and click, now I can externally access my Synology NAS and I can have my user. So what I need to do, let's configure the rest of my domain here in my Synology. So I come here in my beta panel and double click here in my Synology. If you look here, here is my domain. So I paste this domain. Let's take out this HTTP to don't confuse the system. And now we'll be look, looking for this website and that will be able to access it. So now I can put here save. So now if I click here, they will open my Synology drive. And if I log in the same way, I have access for my Synology drive. And only me as a user Cyber Lab will have access for my folder or my item Cyber Lab. And now you're going to ask, Alan, I don't believe that you external access it because my point, you is still in the same network. So let's close all this page that I don't need anymore. So if I come here, I have access to my Synology using my IP address or I can have my website. But let's connect for my guest network. So I come here, guest network, I connect it. So if I come here and try to refresh this page, they basically will not connect because this network is not connected for the same network. If I come here and try to access IP53, they will not access because basically it's different network. But if I come here and try to use my Synology drive, I can still use as I was in my network. So no difference for me. I can access anywhere, everywhere and anywhere that I want. And here I don't have access anymore. So if I come back for my normal network, yes, I can have access and I still have access for this one, but I can have access anywhere that I want. I hope that you guys like this video. This video was basically how to explain how to install Knowledge Drive and how to have access for it outside for your network. In the next videos, we're going to show more information as backup, as uh, extra protections and continue on. So if you like this video and think that was interesting, please don't forget to leave your like consider subscribe for the channel if you're not subscribed yet and see you next time bye